This introduction to part three, as I chronicle my hair restoration, is being recorded in mid-December 2020. Now some of this might be a little confusing because I've recorded at different intervals as I've gotten my hair restored, and then this introduction is happening in the future from those points in time, and I've done a couple time lapses. But basically, I'm trying to step through the competing timelines of both the different times I got extractions and hair growth from each incremental extraction. So right now, as I said, it's mid-December 2020. You can see my hairline starting to come in and it's coming in in patches, but we'll go through that in another video. So right now I wanna continue chronicling the extraction and the growth as it comes in. And at some point the timelines will converge and each incremental update will be the latest and the greatest. And I'll just be talking about things as they are in the present day. But for now, let's go back in time as I restored my hair. In about three days, I'm gonna have my next hair transplant. Let's see. Had one in the back, had another one here, so three. So this will be the fourth one. And the reason that it's so many is she's, the doctor is just doing a little bit at a time because I think my scalp can only handle so many grafts at a time. If you do too many, you can have necrosis or just the grafts won't take. So. That was frustrating. It, I think it's the best way. So the reason I'm standing here with no shirt is I'm basically, I'm taking hair from all over my body. Head donor area is pretty depleted. I think there's only a little bit more. Um, so let's take a quick look at my head. Do my best here. Um, you can see um, I have a couple pimples and ingrown hairs. That's um, not very pleasant, but I guess it just goes with the territory and it seems to be healing. I have a big one back there that seems to be okay. So I, I started you know, I started back here, um, and I'm Norwood 7, so this went all the way back here, and then here, and we used beard hair here, and we're gonna try to use beard hair again in this area. I wanna be careful not to get it in this hairline area, because you know, beard, beard hair is too thick for the hairline, so I'm gonna try to just do right before that perimeter and then I'm actually thinking of using maybe this abdomen hair or even some of the hair on the nape of my neck. Because if you look at a normal hairline, it's very fine. It's like baby hair in the front. So that's what I want to try to accomplish too. Definitely only single hair graft. Even though it's only two hairs in a graft or three hairs, it can give a pluggy look. So you really need to have the single hairs in the front. And we'll see. I do have a lot more on. Um, you can see here I took the leg hair. It's healing, but still going to take a little more time. Um, but I, I have plenty more leg hair. Um, you can kind of see there. So that I have like a full head of hair worth of leg hair. So I'll probably run out of money before I run out of hair. Hopefully neither happens. Um, another thing, I'm, I'm at the two month point and um, I don't think I'm seeing any growth yet. It's still at that stage where the hair falls out. So I'm getting into the third month right now. And I think hopefully during this month and by the end of this month, I'll start to see it coming in and then it'll just keep coming in month by month after that. So I just got back from my fourth surgery. Why am I dressed like this? Well, two reasons. One, we're in the COVID situation, you still gotta cover your face. But the other situation is, and let me try to take this off very gently. All of the hair came from, let's just put this down here. All of the hair came from my face and my face is still kind of numb. My lips are big. Anyway, so it came from the mustache and the beard and the sideburns. And to put that on my head, I'll try to gently, actually I'm gonna shut this off and take this head thing off. Okay, so you can see I'm all bandaged up right now. Let's try to go in a little more light. Let me, let me immediately show you the area um, it's kind of the middle of my head, getting towards the front, to the front and the hairline. Yeah, so I got there at 9.30. I don't know what time is it now? Now it is 5.26 p.m. Uh, pretty much in surgery all day and just kind of laying there and getting poked at. Uh, that was, wasn't painful, you know, you get these shots, numbing shots, but laying, that was quite uncomfortable. I don't know, but it is what it is, and hopefully it'll all be worth it. 
Again, I mentioned this before, she likes to do 1,500 per session. This time she was actually able to get 1,600. But it, it's kind of good sometimes not to dense pack, especially when from the donor area, because if you put the punches too close, the, they can kind of merge together. And she did this last time, and it, um, it really perfect. You can't even see it. You know, obviously it's in my face, so I really don't want to have any scarring, and you just got to be careful with it. Okay, so I've woken up. It is the next day. As you can see, I look like something, a little bit of a bloody mess. It's actually not as bad as it looks. Some of this is just blood that's spread, and it's dried, and it'll be wiped off when I go into the office today, or maybe I'll do a little myself before I go in. Another thing is they use a smaller punch. The head extraction, they use a one millimeter punch. For the face, they use a 0.8 millimeter punch, and that is critical and makes a difference because it is your face. The first time I had the hair taken from this really lower area, and that all worked fine. The one thing I didn't like is it was also taken from right around this Adam's apple esophagus area, and there was an ingrown hair there. And it formed a bump, what they call a sebaceous shift, and that was very uncomfortable every time I swallowed. Fortunately, that healed pretty quickly. I asked this time if they could take it more from this upper area, mustache, and sideburns, and they were able to get the same amount of graft, so it seems to have worked fine. Just wanted to do a quick update. This is two days after my surgery. You can see it's already healing, and a lot of what's left, especially my mustache and my chin, that's just dried blood. I don't want to pick it off. That'll become a very... That'll become a very small dot pretty soon. Looking pretty good already, and um, I expect you won't even be able to see it at all in, in just a few more days. That's fine. So I just want to do a really quick video. I'm just here in the middle Bangkok. of Bangkok, but I want to show you how, how my beard looks. It's been um, it's been about exactly one week since my surgery. So let's take a quick look. A quick sneak peek at my head. Um, yeah, so really, pretty much around the fifth day, it, you really could hardly see it, and I, you barely can see it at all right now. Yeah, the beard hair really can heal very quickly. It's impressive. Make sure you have a good doctor because it is your face. Just doing a quick update here. It's been about nine days since my transplant. And as of today, all the scabs are off, so you can take a quick look at how the hair is going to look. You know, it's, of course, going to fall out, but this is a little preview of how it will look. Uh, so there we go. And this is all facial hair. Um, one thing I noticed about the facial hair versus other hair is this hair seems to stick around a lot longer, and I don't think all of it falls out. Some of it just keeps growing. I guess it's a lot denser and stronger, so for whatever reason, some of it stays. And this whole temple area needs to be filled in. This isn't symmetrical. So, and then I'm gonna fix this a little bit. So a little temple area here. So I think I might end up doing really just the hairline and maybe the temples. Today we're at about 2.6 months. About a week ago, I started seeing the first signs of hair coming in. I wasn't sure if it was hair from before or you know my imagination, wishful thinking. And one thing I wondered, and I looked at a lot of videos, is, okay, what does the hair look like when it first comes in? And it basically looks like a baby. It looks very fine and might not even have color. And then gradually it'll get thicker and have more color. So if you're wondering what are the first signs, it's not likely going to pop in and just be its full thickness and the way it looks when it's mature. It just very fine baby hair. One other thing is I'm in Thailand, and here in Thailand, they do prescribe oral minoxidil. It's on not the topical, but the oral, low-dose oral minoxidil. I'm taking 1.25 milligram. So my hair loss, I've had been bald for a long time, so that's not going to make hair come back from the dead. But it is, I think, helping to accelerate and thicken the new hair that's just been transplanted. My lovely assistant is going to help film. Are you ready, lovely assistant? Yes. Okay. Okay. I don't have to say anything. I'll make, is it clear? Yes, it is. I'm going to just keep turning. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you, lovely assistant. Yes. Actually, I just, in my most recent transplant, had hair transplanted here, and I think it actually caused shock loss in this front area. Um, because, yeah, I mean, it wasn't thick, but I definitely had some hair in the front. You can see particularly right here, it, um... Looks like some of that hair fell out. Hopefully it will come back. I'm going to have that reinforced anyway, and then hopefully the new hair plus my existing hair all comes back for a thick and luscious conclusion, but we'll, we'll see about that. How was your day? It was wonderful. Um, and this is what it would be like if Mr. Rogers lived yeah. in Bangkok and had a hair transplant. It took a long day. It did. Let me show you the goods. A full reveal. Okay, so... Bandana thing off without gently, slowly. Oh, <clears throat> oh, okay. yo. <laughs> so I had this um, front, basically the hairline and the temple points. Um, it was a total of, let me stand back up. It's a total of um, 1,500 grafts. It's 800 from the abdomen area. I'm gonna give you a little peek here. Um, and another 700 from the head. You can't really see that. Okay. Came from this area. I'm actually surprised she was able to get more from my head, but I was able, 700 more, I'm sure I'm all tapped out now, probably gonna need SMP tattooing to fix mm -hmm. it. But anyway, hopefully this, this might be the last one, but uh, just wanted to give you a quick update. And, uh, my assistant is suggesting I stand here. Anyway, you can take a little look here. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. We'll, we'll, um, we'll see how it goes. So it is the next day, I've taken most of the bandages off. I still, I still have this one because it's bleeding out. And it will probably stop pretty soon, but uh, as you can see, I have a normal hairline now, and even though this, these scabs will come off and the grass will fall out, but already it makes my face look quite a bit different. Um, let's take another look down here. Um, so this is my abdomen area. The dots look big today, but they will get smaller. Um, and 800 grafts from there was used, and the hair here is very straight and matches the characteristics of of my head, so that was a good area to take care of. One other thing, um, my head is a little swollen here, and that's because they use this, like, tumescent solution that basically expands the skin and makes it easier to both implant and extract. Okay, my head finally stopped bleeding, so I'm going to show you the both sides of the donor area on my head. So, this is the right side. Took less from here because there was less. There was less there. Let's we'll try to see the left. It's still bloody. Um, I don't want to wipe it off because I don't want it to start bleeding again, but hopefully you can get kind of a good look. Um, so a lot of times they don't take hair from this kind of front area because there can be recession there, but I haven't had any and I just don't have much hair left, so I basically had to go with what's available and that was okay with me. And um, I'll try to give you one more shot without any bandages here. My hairline. But still, still a long road ahead.